Hello everybody, what is up, and welcome to DCS Season 2. This is my first game to cast of the season, so I am so excited. For Game 1 here, on the blue side, we will have White to the 9, and on the purple side, we will have Proper Logic Gaming. Bands are coming fast and furious here, so I'll do a little, I'll wait for the intro until, you know, we get through this. So, over on the blue side, we see the Ari, the Yaslo, and the Lissandra ban. And coming out of Proper Logic Gaming, we see the Gnar, the Jarvan, and the Annie ban. And that allows White to the 9 to pick up the first pick, Vi. Going for the jungle pick, making sure... Uh, I'm pretty sure actually I play Janna as their jungler this season. Getting a pick that he feels comfortable with. And over on the side of Proper Logic Gaming, we see the answer with the Maokai and the Rek'Sai. So the jungle matchup locked in very early here go along with the game uh kind of quick i like it we see the gang flank cover i don't think that'll be the case we didn't see any mid lane ban or mid lane bands here against wolfran alpha uh alpha formerly tacos con queso who was a jungler last season converted to mid lane been playing a lot of leblanc and ari are his two favorites they actually banned out the ari themselves Instead, here looking up to pick up the Caitlyn and the Janna. Very, very strong lane. Um, obviously, Proper Logic Gaming did a little bit of their homework if they knew I Play Janna wasn't actually playing in their support role this season. So, but yeah, guys. So DCS season two. For those of you that you know saw season one, it had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. I don't know. I had a lot of fun with it. So. I hope you guys are hyped for Season 2. This is my first game to cast, so I am hyped. This is a lower division match. Uh, so, yeah. Let's get on with this. Let's enjoy it. We see the Graves hover here for Proper Logic Gaming PLG. I don't know. What do you guys think I should call White to the 9? White X9? White TN? WTN? What the 9? I don't know. We see the Blitzcrank lock in, followed by the Graves. That could have the possibility of being a very aggressive lane here for PLG. Be curious to see what they go with, uh, go for there. See who Blitzcrank tries to prioritize hooking. Uh, if he can hook in the Janna, that could actually be quite troublesome for uh, WTN. So we just definitely have to see what they can do here. We see the Aurelia hover here for White to the Nine, trying to... They need a mid laner and a top laner. We do see the LeBlanc cover. Uh, the Morgana could go as well, the top lane, but I'd expect the LeBlanc to come out here. It is one of Wolfren Alpha, Alpha's uh, very, very comfort picks, so would not be surprised in the slightest if that does indeed come out. I am being kind of dumb, guys. I'm sorry. I should have had this plan a while ago, but oh well. Better late than never, right? We do see the Aurelia lock in for the top lane here, and it will be the LeBlanc as well. Rounding out white to the nice comp, they have, I'm, I guess, blow up one person. You have Vi ulting in, you have Caitlyn that can try the ace in the hole, you have a Wonk that's going to be wanting to jump in from the sides. Same with Aurelia once you get the Trinity Force. This is going to be a very hit and run style team, so we'll definitely have to see how they play it. Whereas on the other side, you see a very, uh... Already a very tanky team coming out here from PLG with the Maokai. Blitzcrank is deceptively tanky. So is Graves, uh, one of the more tanky AD carriers on his own. So, oh god, the Toucans have arrived. The Toucan is here. We are just looking for, looks like a mid laner here for PLG. So we'll have to see who they go with here. And the Zera pick, so a bit of a long range. Wanting to stay safe against the LeBlanc. A good option here, honestly, with the hit and run style. Yes, Vi's gonna be able to get to him. Yes, Caitlyn can shoot the ace in the hole at him. LeBlanc's gonna try and come in on him, but he can stun one of them up, try and keep him there. Let the Maokai go in, let the Rex side jump in, and just let Grave burst anyone down that he so chooses. So, um, definitely kind of a re engage comp here from PLG, wanting to wait, almost wait for. White to the 9 trying to jump on them and then use the stuns, use the lockdowns to keep them there and destroy them. So we'll have to see how both teams kind of play around this because if you're White to the 9, you really want to do that. You want to jump in, burst down the Graves, burst down the Zerith and get the hell out of there. 
but at the same time, PLG, I guess you're engaged with a Blitzcrank Hook or the Maokai uh, jumping in, landing the Splits in advance. So we'll have to see. Uh, okay, Spectator away. So, guys, I love Oscar. Uh, I play Janet. Oscar Sangato is the one that is responsible for all of these overlays, all these designs. He has been fantastic. So, let me put these up. We have the team profile. First up, white to the nine on the blue side. Top lane is Mr. Tibbins. In the jungle, I play Janna. Mid lane, Wolfram Alpha. At the AD carry, Kirby Dude B52. And at support, too bad, too sad. Um, definitely a different comp, a uh, different team for them as they, you know, a couple of their players have role swap through the offseason, so we'll have to see how they can adjust to their new roles and play in this team environment. And over on the side of Proper Logic Gaming, we have Observant Al in the top lane, Dare Bear Boy in the jungle, Sammy Duck in mid lane, I'm not going Dr. McLuhan in at the AD carry role, and JT Maniac in the support. Um, I... I don't know what to say about uh, Proper Logic Gaming. I haven't seen very many of their players play, unfortunately. So this is one of my first times to get to see these guys, and I'm excited. I'm happy to be able to watch these guys play, and I've been really looking forward to this season after how great last DCS season was. So uh, I'm really excited to be able to start with this. And then for those of you, I don't know, that maybe don't pay attention or haven't seen, uh, tomorrow night, 8.30 I believe, the upper division sister team for White to the Nine, Black to the Nine, will be starting their season up against Wizardmon is Illuminati. Uh, it will be right here on this channel at 8.30. So after this game ends, after the series ends, come check it out. Uh, for those of you that are new to DCS, it is an in-house UT Austin league run by the uh, UT Austin chapter of TESPA. It is uh, OGN style, LCK, whatever. Best of two. 1-1 uh, gives you one point to both teams. 2-0. I think we're doing three points. I I should know that. I'm an admin. Oops. Uh, read the rules. Um, Kappa. But, so that's what these two teams are playing for. Only two games. They will, you know, they will switch sides most likely. It is choice of sides, so they don't have to. But more often than not, they will. We have about 30 seconds left here, so we'll, you know, we're just gonna run through the, let the team profiles keep running. I will uh, actually be right back. Bit of a break for me in the last 20 seconds, but be right back, guys. Ah, uh, better. Sorry about that, guys. So, two seconds, and now we get to the fun part. I get to switch to this one. Make sure this actually refreshes so we see, you know, we see game things. Should work. Maybe. Try it, please. No one's gonna bet? Come on, people. Come on, I know there's some people in here that can bet. The bet is open, I have not closed it yet. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. The bot showed you above how to bet. It's not extremely difficult. I will, you know, there, I'll copy all this shit. There we go. I will keep the bet open until five minutes or first blood. That's how I do this. So, if you think white to the nine will win, you see the team comes up on your screen. If White to the Nine wins, do uh, exclamation bet, uh, how much you want to bet, and then uh, one for White to the Nine. If you think PLG will win, do exclamation point bet, your amount, and uh, two for PLG. You can check how much currency you have at any time by going into the chat and doing uh, exclamation point green VIX. So, you know, don't be intimidated by how much it's going to show me having that uh, set number one we have white to nine zero zero this is game number one that's still in bowl ah that's fine whatever let's fix these around because i don't think vi is going to be playing uh playing in the mid lane sorry anyone that wanted to see that so as we get into game here we see both teams kind of 
grouping up around this bottom side river. I think White to the Nine was able to see them uh, walk in there. We do see LeBlanc going a little deep. Oh, there's a rest of the team, though. There's the sapling. It's not quite going to be able to catch on. Nice little bit of poke coming out from the Zerith, however. Uh, LeBlanc, that might just be the end of White to the Nine's level one shenanigans. As it looks like they're just going to start to back up. I still have music playing, don't I? Well then, I don't think we're still on pick band. I can do that. Actually, is my music even, my league music even playing? Guys, I'm sorry. Don't hate me. I'm actually going to shut that one out, but don't hate me. I promise. Sorry about that. Okay, now there should be some actual in-game volume. You know, how high is that actual volume? Let me do stuff like this. Ping's volume. No ping volume. God, no ping volume, please. Uh, and the thing with Green Vix is you normally get, I think it was set at 15 minutes, yeah, 15 for every 15 minutes you're in or something. Um, Chris, it will overwrite your previous five. So if you want to do, uh, if you want to put all 10 bet like that, then you need to just change it to uh, bet 10 one, because otherwise you it won't let you bet five twice. But we do see Maokai Gai getting bullied away from Razor Beaks here, getting chased down by Relia. He isn't going to be able to hit level two off that camp, like I'm sure he really wanted to. So we'll have to see what he can do here. We do see opposite side stars here for both junglers with Rek'Sai going for the blue and uh, Vi going for the music, please. All right. I'll play a little bit of music just during. Let me know if the music gets too loud. Uh, so, <laughs> rip betting. Yeah, Chris, I guess you're the only one that wants to bet. But no one's confident enough. No one believes in their teams enough. We do see, I don't know, a bit of a even lane here. We do see the first buy gang coming in at the three minute mark. Nice stun from the Zerith. We'll stop LeBlanc from getting any ideas there about trying to dive turret. We do see the ignite. That could have easily led to a kill. Had he not landed the stun, so nicely done there to stay alive. Uh, they're doing well. They're holding on. We'll have to see here. I'm really curious to see how Oscar, the uh, how I play Janna, stays relevant in this jungle. He did make a nice move with the level three or the three minute gank, the level two gank. So yeah, it doesn't notify you that the bet went through. It, it's into the system. That 5 in brackets on your Green Vix number actually shows how much you have in the current bet. When I close the bet, it will show how much was bet for each. So, it doesn't notify you, but it's still good. We see Blitzcrank missing the hook. He did throw it on Caitlyn, though, and I believe level 3 Caitlyn should have the... Oh, I'm bad at this. Ah, whoops, wrong person. I don't want the Rexa, I want the Caitlyn. Caitlyn did have the 90 caliber net available, so wasn't exactly the scariest thing in the world if the Blitzcrank hook would have hit, but we do see Zareth landing another stun there. LeBlanc actually is about half health, but Zareth is backing away. Vi and Aurelia taking the time. Oh. God damn it, Chris. Ugh, I forget I have a one minute delay. This is so confusing. I don't normally play with delays or cast with delays. Rip. Rip, rip. Okay. Um, we do see here White, uh, WT9, WTN. I'm gonna call him WT9 so many times tonight, guys. Uh, kind of apologies for that. We do see they're kind of back up to their turret and bottom lane, but at the same time, Aurelia kind of shoving Maokai in here in the top lane has about a 6 CS advantage. Really nothing to write home about at this point for either team in front of the advantages so you, as you can see by you know even gold and we hit the five minute mark so <laughs> you get the fun part of being the only person to uh to a vet oh actually we might see first blood here a rally gang dove one taken very low is able to get away has to burn the flash but just barely survives meanwhile we see leblanc trying to maybe jump in there and isn't quite enough, so I think that's all I have to do. Yep, okay, vets are locked in. 
so good luck, Chris. Um, <laughs> for game two, we might do some smaller, not necessarily who's going to win bets, but maybe things like, um, you know, first blood, most kills, things like that. Uh, we've done before does Mocha Sprinkles die and things like that. So we do see LeBlanc trying to go in again. Wolfram Alpha just not able to quite catch what he needs to really get burst down. He is only level 5, so he doesn't have that massively insane level 6, you know, free spell burst. But he's getting rather close. Vi comes in again. They burn the Zareth Flash. He did bring Flash Heal. He knows he's going to try and get jumped on a lot. And Vi making her presence felt in that mid lane. Definitely wanting to pressure the Zareth. Understand that's where the potential is for the gang. We see LeBlanc going all in. He gets the stun. Is he going to get it? Heal goes down. So does the Ignite. Not quite enough. Summoners. Uh, the one summoner burned on each side. We do see Hook landing into Janna. There's. Uh, not quite enough. And we do see. We do see Caitlyn was there with the trap, uh, if the situation so needed. But what is Graves' smokescreen actually called? I should know this, but I don't play... What is his smokescreen actually called? Smokescreen! Okay! We hire me to write, uh, ability names, please. We'll get... Anyone that watched the playoffs last year, we'll get Lucian's cross thing. Um, instead of, what, Arden Blaze or whatever it is? So we do see Caitlyn just trying to get some damage. Janna just missed getting hooked again. Uh, probably might want to ward there in that bush. We do see a LeBlanc coming down from the mid lane. Here we go. There's the slow that's going to try and land. There's the stun going to land. Heal burned. Exhaust goes down. LeBlanc has to get out of turret range. And that will be safety for the POG bot lane. N nice attempt at a roam there by Wolfran Alpha. But no dice here. And we did see Rek'Sai starting to... Uh, was making their way down there just in case. So, uh, Dare Bear knowing where he was needed. And we will just see, we do see some nice wards, or the nice ward. Oh, no, it is multiple. Nice wards there from PLG seeing exactly where I play Jenna is at the moment. So they have the information that they need, really. There is the ward in Dragon Pit for WTN, but... He didn't have Buckshot. He's not... Or Buckshot. Uh, it might have missed. I think it actually missed. Uh, I... I know my ability name so well, I didn't know what ability you were talking about for a minute. No, uh, I believe Buckshot missed. But we do see another stun landing by Xerath, but instead he's just gonna get... Oh, well, I say he's gonna get jumped on. Looks like LeBlanc just won CS, but LeBlanc taking a lot of damage now from the Xerath poke. Uh, do the mid laners have blue buff? Zareth does. This is really gonna hurt. Passive ends up getting procced by the LeBlanc there. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. That's a nice little escape if you can do it right. Jan Here comes the Vi. Rek'Sai's there, but they're not close enough. There's the ultimate. There's the stun. Is Vi gonna get the first blood? Yes, indeed. First blood to WTN and I play Janna. Uh, wasn't quite able to hit the extra chain there from the LeBlanc. Otherwise, I'm sure the kill would have gone over to the mid laner. We do see Rek'Sai kind of hovering around the top, but isn't going to find anything on this Aurelia. I'd imagine that's a decent bit of gold right now. Yeah, about 1,200 gold, so we'll just have to see. Not really wanting to back away, having the nice little 13 CS lead. And we do see the blue buff going over to LeBlanc. Nice transfer there. Uh, we'll just go back with it. We do see Graves is starting to open up that CS lead nicely there in the bot lane, up to about 15. And we'll have to see what he can do. They were smart. We do see that ward in the bush. Blitzcrank isn't going to get any more. Or hopefully get any hooks from that spot. Considering they can see him. But we do see Teleport is up for for the Aurelia over the uh, Maokai. And at 10 minutes, you really... This dragon starts to become more of a possibility here. Especially now, I mean... WTN has no way to know it, but the PLG wards in that bottom side jungle are no longer there. They have just expired, so this would be a... Oh, there's the hooks going to land. They're going into the Janna. Oh, there's the Zareth. 
ult. It's just out of range of Janna. We do see all the ultimates going down. Vi coming in, getting the first kill. There is someone going to get away, taken so low, but down goes Blitzcrank. Double kill for the Jam or for the Vi. Three and zero for I play Janna in this game. Stun is going to hit, but. That's not going to be anything more than that. We did see Zareth roam down, but he wasn't quite there in time. And that should be Dragon here for WTN 11 minutes into the game. Starting to open up the bit of the lead. We see the 1.5k gold lead off of those kills. And we'll just have to see what, how they try and take advantage of this. That was a very nice play from them. Sending four members down there like that. They had complete control of that situation. And that's Dragon. Yep, he didn't have... Oh, he did have Smite. That's... Okay. Um, but we do see... I would look to maybe think here, White to the Nine, look to taking some turrets, look to try and take some map control here with this lead. Because otherwise, I mean, the Caitlyn's still behind in CS. Yes, you now have two assists there. Well, Blanc doesn't actually have any of the kills. All of the kills are on to... The Vi here, so we'll have to see ha what happens with that. But at the same time, I play Jenna doing a nice job of making the Vi presence felt. As we can see, Rek'Sai, same amount of farm and not a single kill yet or an assist. Uh, kind of been trying to stand the jungle. You see the tunnel network in the in PLG's own jungle, but. So at the moment, just trying to farm, and even then, not really able to get a farm lead at that. So, Rek'Sai having some trouble here. The minion being the true MVP here. Here comes Rek'Sai into the bot lane. Caitlyn is, I think, just going to 90 caliber net away, and that won't mean anything. So, we do see the bit of the slow hitting there from the Maokai sapling, and Vi is just going to Maokai away. This time, it is... WTN's turn to get some deep lords as Rek'Sai just takes one out there at the blue buff, but they have quite a few wards in that topside jungle, so kind of saying the focus is going to be on topside. Oh, Blitzcrank, I think you were out of the bush there, buddy. Um, oh, oh, the feels. Uh, here comes Vi again. Flash and heal are both up. There's a Rek'Sai there as well. They're jumping straight in. There's the heal. In comes Aurelia from the side. Vi will get taken down by the Rek'Sai under turret. There's the LeBlanc passive. They're trying to take turret aggro. Double kill for Aurelia. Will Aurelia fall to the turret? She will not. She survives with the sliver of health. Meanwhile, Blitzcrank gets taken down by the Caitlyn. And Graves now has to run for his life. I'm kind of curious what happened in that bot engage. So let's see if we can stay down here for a minute. And uh, see what happened with that bottom side engage while we were up top. It looks like... So let's see here, Blitzcrank, we saw this, yep, he was actually standing outside the bush, that's so unfortunate. And then we see the dive coming in from the mid lane right about now. If you look on the minimap, there's the dive, Rek'Sai coming in, let's see what happens here. Does Blitzcrank start this? Oh, Blitzcrank, oh, Caitlyn starts it with some autos. Uh, here comes Blitz, he misses the hook, and that just allows them to go to town on him. There's the... Janna ultimate just to keep the health up the top and that was a dead dead blitzcrank so um rip rip all we do see no one going down yet we should yeah we're back up to life six to one now and kills the 2000 gold lead here for wtn and things just kind of went bad to worse in that mid lane they did pick up the kill rex High finally able to get something done but it was because they dove three man under turret, uh, Zareth does not have summoners again. That could be an issue here. Is that Vi has made it known that this is going to be a mid-heavy game. They do have the ward in the river bush. So they do see the Aurelia taking Scuttle. Uh, they're just trying to... We see the ward coverage here. If we take a look at the different sides of the map, the ward coverage difference here is kind of astounding here for WTN. All of those deep wards in the topside jungle, they can see pretty much any camp. Well, I say that as one of the wards expires at Razor Beak, but they could see pretty much anywhere Rek'Sai wanted to go for a camp in that topside jungle. So, nice use of the 2k gold lead to get vision down. We do see the upgraded yellow trinket on the Aurelia. I've actually really liked that trinket 
uh, actually using the upgraded the stealth totem instead of the uh, pink ward totem. So interesting choice, but I think either of them are good. We'll have to see. Oh, Blitzcrank going to face check the Blitz, but he is, again, rather tanky. There's the passive getting proc. Ignite does go down. Is it going to be enough? I think he sh should survive. Yes, he will. Uh, well, Blanc using everything there except for the flash, but that should allow this bottom side turret, I would think. Janna's sitting in this, or Vi sitting in this bush waiting, but I don't think, no, it doesn't look like there's any real need for I play Janna to be there. We do see just clearing out the ward that Blitzcrank almost lost his life to place. Meanwhile, Rek'Sai is just screaming and going to the red buff. Yeah. Oh, another stun lands. I I should have started like a stun counter. Maybe that should have been the bet for this game is how many stuns does Zerath land? Because if anyone bet like over five, I'm pretty sure they would have won by now. Hey, like, shouldn't you be... Oh, don't y'all have a game tomorrow? Shouldn't you be practicing for that? Oh. Man, LeBlanc doing well because... Every time we go to that mid lane, it seems like there's a little bit of poke coming down from the Zerath. Look at this three man. Look at this. Look at this team. They don't. They have no idea. It's still there. They have no idea who's there. But at the same time, they are waiting for pretty much no one. Graves is coming down, but nope. He's just gonna peace out. He's gonna back away. Doesn't look like anyone's gonna actually come for the death push. And there's the sad Janna showing herself. Oh, the passive getting punked again by a little bit of the poke from Zerith there. And he's been doing a good job with that poke. It just hasn't led to anything. He's 0-2-1. He is even in CS. Uh, so the kills of the 5 assists for LeBlanc has led to boots and an extra Dorn play. Oh, here we go. Rek'Sai trying to get caught out a little bit. First a quick flash from... LeBlanc in comes uh, forced to click flash from Vi, sorry. Oh, the LeBlanc gets hooked, or the Vi gets hooked, that should be dead. Kill up to Graves, and now WTN just needs to run. Janna getting caught as well. Double kill for the Graves. Will they go under turret for this, or will they just turn to Dragon? They're gonna get... <laughs> They're gonna get two kills there, get them back. LeBlanc really couldn't even go in on that fight. She was so low from the poking lane. And, oh, I was watching that Chris Kappa, but, oh, LeBlanc gonna try and go in, is he gonna quite be able to take out Blitzcrank, there's the Aurelia doing it instead, that is Dragon over to PLG, let's see if they try and turn this, <laughs> Maokai's just gonna clear out the ward and go, uh, I don't know if he laughed or not, I think he should've, but, yeah, like I was saying, LeBlanc was so low from the poking lane, really couldn't do anything that fight, and Vi forced to flash so early there, it really led them with no escape and just five man pile dive onto both the Vi and the Janna led to bad times uh, for WTN there. But so Dragon, two kills, and you know, a little bit of that gold back here for PLG. But we'll have to see. And by the way. WTN, if you watch this later, I hate you for playing I play Janna and fucking Janna in the same game. I hate you. This is caster hell. But we do see top turret going down. Second turret of the game here for WTN. That does help with the gold. That, you know, they didn't lose back from Dragon. But... So we'll have to see. Baron's coming up in five minutes. I don't think we'll see the 20 minute Baron in this game. Uh, we probably will some this season though. Any of you that, you know, watch playoffs. Oh, let's see what happens here. Graves trying to go in. There's the smoke screen. He misses the collateral damage. And he takes one turret shot for his trouble before just having to back away. No one saw that. But meanwhile, Blitz forcing the flash. There's a LeBlanc taking down Zerith as well. Rek'Sai ulting in. I don't know if Rek'Sai wants to ult in this fight. Just tunneling away as well. And that just happened for WTN. Uh, in that mid lane, oh, I feel so bad for the Graves missing. Oh, there's the tilt over Peacemaker missing. The bot lane is misses, and this is. 
But as we did see here, we did see LeBlanc able to finally take down the Zareth in that lane. It has been attempted for so long. Here comes a Vi. They do have eyes on the Graves. Graves dodging the cube. Burning the heal quickly, trying to get away. There isn't a rep upside. This is a dead Graves. Bye-bye, Dr. McLovin. In comes Dare Bear Boy, and out goes Dare Bear Boy. Oh, he's trying this. There's the Maokai sapling, so he is there. But that won't be anything special. Meanwhile, mid turret goes down. All of the outer turrets have fallen down. Like to the nine have opened up the 5,000 gold lead here. Jungle Janna. Oh, please. Is that, is that going to be as bad as a support Skarner, or... But, at this point, we kind of saw what PLG has to do to maybe get back in this game. They have to just five-man go in on someone as Fran takes another bit of poke. Um, he's not having a fun time trying to dodge. Hey, Todd, you taught him everything he knows. Get him some dancing, dancing shoes next time or something. Um, but we see here they are kind of pushed back. It is taking them a little bit. 22 minutes and only the outer turrets have fallen. We haven't seen an inner turret fall yet. But, I mean, eh, it's 22 minutes. You do have the Caitlyn. You can, you can uh, see jump rather well. They do have, I guess, decent, they have actually really good wave clone inside of PLG with the Xerath. Uh, so, that's going to be a little hard to siege. But, you still should be able to when you have this bit of a lead. So, we'll have to see what they do if they keep kind of staying in lanes. We do see Caitlyn having better dancing shoes than the LeBlanc with a move. With a skill. Wow, that was an early collateral damage. There's the 90 caliber net. Janna's coming up from the side. What are you doing, Janna? What? That was a glorious ultimate. It is going to sacrifice your life for it. But, holy shit, that was kind of glorious. We do see LeBlanc getting hooked in. In comes the from the side. And the fight is on in earnest. There are multiple members of... WTN here, and this is a whitewash here for PLG. They did not want this. There's the tunnel. All the... Oh, I thought the tunnel failed, but there's... Uh, Vi trying to continue. In comes Aurelia from the side. Are they going to be able to get there? There's the flash. The Q just misses, but Aurelia picking up the final little bit of kill. LeBlanc going to take that one. What the hell? I can't even say that, this. <laughs> what? But meanwhile, we just saw there what happened. Let's see if we can go back to that because um, that was exactly what you want, really. Because we see here early collateral damage coming out from Graves, doing quite a bit of damage. 90 caliber net away, and then Janna, the the true support here, is knocking four members every which way. Graves gets blown up from the LeBlanc. We see Rexai tunneling in on the Janna, and it gives time. The, nine, the ace in the hole goes down and allows Vi just to completely blow up. Actually, kill going over to LeBlanc there, and then we see the rest of the team. WTN just had numbers at the end of that fight. Uh, Maokai wasn't there for that, and, I mean, we all saw what happened with the chase, so that's nothing special, but uh, that was just the fact that, I mean, godly Janna saved there. That really separated Graves enough for LeBlanc to get in there. Now 3-0-7. Uh, Janna taking a little bit of poke as well. Oh, Chris, this is why you're not casting. Kappa. Um, I really shouldn't say, I shouldn't be him. I'm sorry, Chris, that, that was funny, kind of. Tell Oscar how bad he is. Whoa, that was a, that was a very aggressive teleport in coming in from Maokai. He is 1v5 right now, unless his team gets there. He, uh... He is kind of having difficulty with Aurelia LeBlanc. He is going to go down. Aurelia is going to pick up the kill. They kind of have to run now, though. Rek'Sai getting taken very low. Not quite going to go down to the ace in the hole. Here comes Zareth getting jumped on. Janna will fall, but two kills, so three for one overall in the fight by, uh, by WTN there, and that will be their second dragon of the game. That was odd. Uh, we do see Aurelia teleporting to a minion there in top lane. Rek'Sai is coming around for a bit of a flank, but we'll have to see. Aurelia's just gonna, looks like, gonna run away. Not gonna try and get that turret, but... And we 
instead see more control coming out here from WTN. Okay, I guess you just wanted to refresh the ward, Oscar. Um, sure, that works. But, and kind of looking at the item builds, we see the rabbit, the death cap here for LeBlanc finally getting a massive bit of a gold lead here. If we take a look at the gold numbers, we see over a 2,000 gold lead in mid lane, a 2,000 gold lead in top lane. Uh, actually, AD carry and jungle. Uh, jungle is the closest, but AD carry, Graves has been doing a pretty decent job. Uh, he's only 10 CS down, but against the 2 0 7 Caitlyn, it's not much. You're not going to have much fun no matter what you're doing. So, unfortunately, it seems like WTN's just been able to move as a team more because. Oh, the Janna getting hooked under turret, forced to flash away, is going to take a turret shot, but it's Janna. Alt is almost up, so can use it to top off the members if they need. That will fall to the tier 2 in mid lane. Janna actually needs to be a little worrisome now. Pretty low in health, but <laughs> I don't think in any issue here. They should find a pink ward. This is actually a bit of a possible issue. Uh, no, they're gonna get away just just making sure this blue box is mine. Blitzcrank, probably the best support in the world for claiming, uh, for claiming buffs. That was a very questionable talisman of Essentia Pop. They're, oh, well, that there's a full team there. I don't know that WTN wants this. Vi's not there, and neither is Aurelia. Aurelia doesn't have TP. Uh, they're going all in on this Caitlyn here. There's the collateral damage. There's the poke coming out from Xerath. Went to Janna. They're trying to get in. The slow's not gonna land from Maokai, and Caitlyn will get out cleanly. Meanwhile, Aurelia was able to stay in the top lane. That is a massive minion wave that's gonna come crashing into the turret here. So, that will probably be another tier 2 turret down. Meanwhile, LeBlanc trying to get some damage there. Isn't quite gonna hit the ethereal chains, and that will be Xerath just kind of floating away. Oh, Maokai. Uh, actually, I don't know who's in more trouble here. The stun did not land, and uh, that means that nothing's going to happen. But we do see this top tier 2 is going to fall. The shield from Janna just to get, you know, a little bit of security there. But, I mean, this team is... White to the 9 seems to be firing kind of on all cylinders right now. I say that when they have had a couple of questionable fights. The, uh, the one around Dragon kind of earlier in the game was, was a bit off. But... They've responded well, they kind of kept it going, and this gold lead now over 8,000. They are going to clear out wards around Baron. Are they going to go for this? They have five members here, and here they are. We see no vision here coming from this if you are the side of PLG. This is going down, I mean, not extremely quickly, but quickly enough. We see PLG just now starting to maybe wander around there, and that will be Baron. To white to the nine taking it at 29 minutes here let's see where they look to go bottom lane still has the tier 2 turret in lane we do see the blue buff just being transferred over to LeBlanc we see a random and finish for Aurelio starting to get extremely tanky now and this is when it starts to get really really scary if it wasn't already for for proper logic gaming um, I think they might need to think of a, a name change because uh, mm, proper logic. Eh. Not so sure about that, guys. Just kidding. I've only seen you play one game. Um, and Frankly, your team comp kind of was not built to do what you are trying to do. Mm, anyway, let's talk about the game. Uh, actually, there isn't anything to talk about the game. It's WT and clearing wards. They are looking like they're going to go bottom side here. It is the only out of base turret left, so uh, probably the most sensible choice. Meanwhile, you can just Cinderella. TP is almost back up. Just to go split push top lane. LeBlanc going into the mid lane. The 1-1. One, one, it's the 1-1-3, one, one, guys. It's not the 1-3-1. One, one. The split push coming out here. That will be the bottom tier 2 turret falling. Uh, that is five members. That was five members of PLG defending bottom while there was no one top or bottom that defending mid. Which lane is lane? God damn it, I can't talk. I give up. But anyway, we see Aurelia has hit the inhibitor turret, got the minion wave there. Rexide's gonna try and clear it out, but this Aurelia is so strong right now. 
Uh, LeBlanc hanging around the side too. If really goes maybe a little too deep. Or if Rek'Sai goes a little too deep. Going in on Maokai actually. That, yeah, that just get back out of there. It's just going to jump out. Move my chat over. Oh, whoops. Okay. Not bad. I forget about that. Well, um, no one saw that. Anyway, we do see the 113 here should start to work with the Baron buff minions in all three lanes. It is going to start to spread PLG thin if they can keep this up. But, uh, and the wave clear from LeBlanc helps too. We'll have to see. Uh, Zareth taking a little bit of damage here. He is at about half health. And they are doing a very good job of defending this. This is really actually hard for BTN, or WTN. Whoops. White to the nine to get into this base here. They have rather good wave clear on the side of PLG. And they're just going to turn around, get Dragon. Uh, Baron buff doesn't have an extreme amount of time left on it. I actually think it's gone now. So they do get Dragon number 3 that will help the movement speed a little bit. But at this point, if they're going for Dragons, this is only the race to 5. So this game's got at least you know 12 more minutes in it if they're going to try that strategy. And with a 11,000 gold lead, you shouldn't be waiting 12 more minutes to finish this game. We do see LeBlanc getting hit up a little bit. We'll get shut down. Kill going over to Zareth. Was this, where's the mistake coming out here? The throws from BTN. They do get the Zareth in the end. But two for one for PLG and uh, WTN. Um, LeBlanc. What happened there? Rip. Meanwhile, uh, so let's see what... PLG tries to do with this. They're just going to rush down. There's the Janus Shield. Maokai is actually going to take quite a bit of damage from that turret. He does have to back away. Uh, the turret should go down. And Maokai going a little deep. Isn't quite going to get taken down by the Piltover Peacemaker. The turret does fall. Janna falls as well. A big minion wave is crashing into the top inhibitor turret. But Zareth is there. It will get cleared out before the tower goes down. And yep. Okay. Uh, WTN kind of needs to be careful there. They may be, you know, just under 10,000 gold ahead, but they can't be doing things like that too often. Getting into 30 minutes here, a big team fight would lead to possibly an inhibitor going down, so uh, they do need to be a little careful about maybe going too deep. It does look like uh, Wolfram Alpha is going for the Zanya tier being a little safer in the future. Uh, Last Whisper, Caitlyn is being Caitlyn and just going damage. Nothing new here. We do see the different AD carry builds. I've kind of liked this lately with the two Phantom Dancer and Stack Shiv being used. I mean, quite often, both of them. So. It's kind of fun to see here the AD carries going for the two different build paths. But we'll have to see. Both of them have. Is that Captain? Or Home Guard? Damn. I want something good, guys. I want something different. Something odd. But. That. Honestly, I think PLG just stalled this game out until at least the next Baron with that bit of a. Bit of a fight win in the mid lane there. So. We just have to see. Baron is in a minute. It's not like, you know, we have a long time to wait here. But WTN taking it very slowly now after that original Baron buff. We do see the Banshee's Veil on Aurelia. I'm as most likely, I'm assuming for either Zerud Stun or the Blitzcrank grab. Uh, but we'll have to see. We do see the Zhonya's finished up as well for LeBlanc here, so... Much more safety there. We see the Ardent. Is it Crest Sensor? The Ardent Sensor there for Jana. We do see. Uh, we do see. We do see. We do see. See how many times I can say that in one, you know, bit of phrasing. 
we uh the way the yeah wards are getting cleared out here they do have a bit of a oh wow rip Zareth. that is now a 5v4 let's see if they go in on this there's the blitzcrank grab it is gonna hook on to janna the ultimate will go down but the rest of the team wasn't really there in time here comes the maokai teleport uh meanwhile aurelia i don't know what aurelia was doing but the teleport gets cancelled from maokai there they did trade one for one uh but mid laner for support and this should be Baron over to White to the nine. Let's see if it takes him 20 seconds to do this. I don't think it will. I don't think Janna's gonna get the buff. Uh, 10 seconds. Gonna take them 11 seconds to do Baron at 20 at 36 minutes. At 26 minutes. Oh, please no. Um, we'll have to see here what the builds maybe come out for. Uh. Nothing doesn't look like anything major being bought at the moment. We do see the locket actually being finished there from Janna, so that will be helpful. I hope you know. Uh, I don't know where they go with this though. This is kind of the same situation they were last time they had this Baron buff. Do they do the one three one? Try and push down all three lanes with the Baron. It didn't really work for them last time. PLG had too much wave clear. Uh, last time they tried that dragon is up in a minute or 40 seconds now if they pick this up that's when it starts getting pretty iffy here for PLG and that's when the timer really comes in on this game so it looks like they're just gonna wait for that dragon not do anything too crazy with the Baron buff yet we do see LeBlanc is pushing mid lane it's just the solo split push this time around uh, gonna get a little bit of damage. Gonna get stunned up though. Needs to be very careful. Passive is gonna get procked and just has to run away. Oh, the Zareth missed Jukes one. He does hit the second one though, and that will be a kill for Zareth. This is a 4v5. They need to be very careful. Caitlyn trying to auto from the side. Aurelia going very deep. What is, is this a replay? Aurelia going so deep there. Double kill for the Graves. Caitlyn is able to pick off Blitzcrank off to the side, but now needs to get the hell out of dodge. Uh, that was overall a 3 for 2 there, as again, WTN going a little too deep under that mid lane turret. And this actually should be Dragon for PLG. I don't know that WTN can, you know, contest this. Which means, if they want Dragon number 5, we are still talking 12 minutes. Um, oh, Janna, why? There's the monsoon going down, trying to stay alive long enough. They will trade one for one. There's the smoke screen, doing what? Oh, Caitlyn flashing, getting the last little bit of autos. Double kill. In comes Maokai. There's the sapling or the present, whatever. Just gonna slow up a little bit. Caitlyn's just gonna life steal and take a blue buff on the way out. Thank you. Uh, so dragon number, I think two now for PLG. Two to three on dragons here. Oh boy, uh, WTN, what the fuck, <laughs> the throws, the throws, but we see here, uh, I, I don't know at the moment what to say, because, you know, this game could be going till 50 minutes if WTN's really gonna play passive enough to go for the five dragons. Yes, PLG has the good wave clear to, you know, stop a siege. But you've had two barons now and haven't cracked the base at all. Yeah. I mean, mm, I'm kind of, you know, I, this is fine when maybe the game's close or something. They've been up over 10k gold for quite a while now in this game and they're still over diving and being uh being a little passive fully here oh Janna just gonna take the little bit of poke and get out of there does have a giant spell added to this I can't imagine what that's gonna be built into we do see LeBlanc just oh no not quite gonna get the star on right side there are numbers here oh whew. Janna missing a L to dodge quote unquote another blitzcrank hook let's see here Caitlyn is pushing a wave into the bottom side here 
buys there as well. Caitlyn can take this turret down rather quickly. We do see the Banshee's Veil on Vi to maybe stop the hook. That turret is so low, they aren't quite going to be able to take it out though. And the base still stands. Um, LeBlanc, you're like half health now. There's a... Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, let's see. Now they're sieging. They didn't do this when they had Baron buff minions. They're trying this now. Okay. Sure. Why not? We do see a Bloodthirster coming out here for the Graves. Yeah, I agree. It is extremely hard for White to the Nine to siege up and really get into this base, but Baron buffs and the gold lead, I guess, is where it has me a little concerned for the team. Um, so, we'll have to, I'll have to see what they try here. Oh, there's the jet, there's the Blitz hook, and there was a Janna there. Meanwhile, LeBlanc is getting a blue buff. That's a 50 second death timer on Janna. They need to be very careful here. Baron's up in a minute and a half. Oh god, Baron's up in a minute and a half. And they really can't lose too many more members because one more member goes down and they're probably not going to make it to that Baron in time. So we'll just have to see. They're continuing to focus kind of this bottom side. There's actually two members top side. This could be the... the uh, Inhibitor tower going down is taking quite a bit of damage. Can they get it? One more shot. There it goes. The inhibitor, the base has been open. The first inhibitor turret has fallen. It took Janna's life to get it. Baron is up in 50. Dragon's up in a minute 50. Where do they go? Do they just try and keep going here? They have three members uh, up top trying to defend this inhibitor. So they are just going to kind of back away from bottom. It, the inhibitor, the tower is so low. It's uh, I guess 600 health isn't the lowest thing in the world, but it's low enough that one more good push might be able to get it. Instead, Baron up in 20 seconds. Janna is back up and rushing down mid lane. They are trying to get the inhibitor. LeBlanc is doing her damnedest, dodging the poke. Gonna get hit with the twist advance, using the Zonius there. Aurelia's coming in, gets the last little bit. Down goes LeBlanc for the trouble. Can Aurelia get out? Gets knocked up by... Blitzcrank gets exhausted, dodges the hook, and will flash. So, uh, they got out. They did get the inhibitor. Baron is up. PLG have vision of this. Let's see if they try and defend it here. Uh, there are no sweepers up. Let's see. Let's see if they can still get that ward. I think they can. Uh, yeah, they see the ward. It's clear. There is no vision here now for PLG. This Baron is about half health. Now they're trying to collapse in here. There's the ward going down. Malkai, there's the sapling. Are they going to try this? Malkai gets in there. No. Baron going over to right to the nine. The Zerath ult wasn't quite able to take down Janna. Using the ultimate to stay alive. Vi is very low trying to get out of there. The right to the nine members are very low. They need to be very careful here. But Aurelia is in the back line here. Janna is able to... Er, <laughs> I play Janna able to pick up Graves. Aurelia able to pick up Zerath. Caitlyn there to pick up the Blitzcrank, and there are some very low members. Janna flashing away is going to stay alive. Double kill for the Caitlyn. We do see Rexide trying to get away. There's the Randolins trying to stay alive here. We'll go over to the buff, but what the teleport. The triple kill with the Ace of the Hole just before the Vi Q gets there. They're pinging different turrets here. Let's see where they go. They don't have minions for any of this. Um... There's a bunch of shields, but that's two inhibitor turrets hitting you. Uh, they are going to get or two inhibitor turrets. There's Nexus turrets hitting you. They're going to pick up one. Meanwhile, LeBlanc's picking up the first one. And they're going to pick up the second Nexus turret. And this should be game one in 45 minutes going over two white to the nine. So let's uh, edit scene on the number. And white to the nine, picking up game one. We'll be right back after a short break, guys. We will be right back with uh, game two.